right, hello, welcome to Adventures in Lollygagging and Friends. We are playing Ultraviolet Grasslands. Dan has changed teapot. Uh, Chuck has finished eating his cookie. Uh, and uh, I think we're ready to go. Or uh, has teapot changed him? Well, Lana, oh, is that orange oh Orange cookie? Oh, orange chocolate. Oh, oh, nice, nice, good choice. Delicious. So good. I uh, I made some bon mi veggie, veggie dogs this weekend that we just had earlier. And then I made banana bread today. Oh, just so Ooh. home pickled veggies. And instead, nice. I'm playing uh, playing games with you instead of eating it. So, uh, <laughs> so there's that. But anyway, uh, so we have an interesting episode tonight. Uh, so we're gonna get at least one new character. We had a weird cliffhanger last week. Um, yeah, we could meet a whole lot of new people tonight. It really oh, yeah. could. I just possibly. I remember that. Oh no, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're the only one who's fine. In fact, it's, it's I really. Just... I figure. I figure we're just gonna start with me and Joe talking a bit. Like, what's Ensign doing? You know, what's he doing? Like, yeah. what does he choose to clean up and load first? And like, he's just gonna walk us through his his caravan loading practices, how he organizes things, where everything goes, how he's talking to your skeletal workers and things. And then, like three days later, he's like, "Where'd the rest of the caravan go?" And that's <laughs> uh, that's it. So yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, why don't we go ahead and introduce characters, at least the, the ones that are currently in play. Uh, some will be changing as the night progresses. Uh, at least one, possibly more. Uh, but uh, let's introduce them. Uh, Joe, you are up first, so tell us uh, who you're playing. I am playing uh, Ensign, the only person not being destroyed by Eldritch Abominations right now. So uh, pretty good. He's still dealing with his... Uh, had a bit of like a crisis when he had an out-of-body experience because to him the only thing that matters is his body uh so he's still dealing with that but uh other than that it's good well yeah yeah yeah, yeah. uh because you were one of the people who were caught you were one of the three that were caught inside right who got got their soul sucked off it was uh, yeah you tango and teapot i believe it was very right. dramatic yeah this has been a new area of weakness that's been exposed for him that he's not okay with it's been super strong in a just... lot of ways, but not like that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Melissa and I realized that the phrase, the suck off thing, that's, that comes from ghosts. That's where it was from. Like we, I remember that a couple days after we had talked about it last time. It's a good show. It's really funny, by the way. Uh, okay. Uh, Melissa, tell us about uh, Lamb for the last time. Yes. Oh. So... Let's go. Hurry up. Come on. We don't, we don't want to waste too much time with a character that's... <laughs> So Satrap956 Lamb is uh, not long for this campaign um, because, I mean, she died for like the third time and rolled on the table. And yeah, uh, thanks to um, Khalil's new brew was able to kind of stay uh, stay alive for another maybe 24 hours. Um, so she is a Satrap. Um, the number denotes the fact that there are not many Satraps. So literally everyone is numbered. Um, so Lamb is 956 and she's got Phil, who's her many fingered monkey lizard that lives in her suit and may look for a different home shortly. Um, mm -hmm. she will mm -hmm. never find the, uh, what was it? Cyan C that she was on the road because you are of... making this way too dramatic. You're just gonna <laughs> you're you're rebooting at a different place. Like you're not dead dead. You're just, you know we'll see. Like this iteration. Yeah, see. Crystal bodies save point. Yeah. That's a philosophical take on it. Mm-hmm. It's like I think we rolled on it too, because I think I have it in my notes that your your backup is in Spectrum Run. That's what I have. Mm, that's right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you're there. It's just, you know. It's got to get there. I mean, at this rate, it's going to be a whole different party by the time it gets there. No one's <laughs> going to remember you, but, you know, other than that. I was like, what were, what were we supposed to do something <clears throat> we got here? Totally forget. Uh, all right, next up, we got Bert. Bert, who are you playing? Khalil Abu, your friendly neighborhood coffee merchant and surgeon. Yes, yes, he makes magical brews of coffee that can both put you to sleep and wake you from the dead. The surgery skills? <laughs> 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 We haven't really seen them put to the test yet. One of these days we should do that. See what happens. Maybe we should never. Or that. That's also 
Maybe he gets maybe he gets the wires crossed at some point. <laughs> okay. I've replaced your heart with a coffee bean. It should be fine. <laughs> Everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. Kidneys are shaped like beans, right? Mm. Uh, bottom row, we have our resident snot bubble. We got Chuck. Tell us about your character. Uh, I'm playing Tango Carne. Um, I'm a ghost, and I possess people. Uh, and I also have a battle ass. Who is a battle ass? You can yeah. tell because of the way it is. Where is the battle ass? We didn't bring the battle <laughs> ass inside, right? Like the battle we didn't bring the battle ass. Okay. okay, just want to make sure. I didn't think so. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the only people that went inside were the like the actual player characters. Yeah. So okay. We also had some art on uh on in the channel, in the Discord channel of uh we have now an artistic rendering of the battle ass. It's another one, right? We have the Yeah, we do. Yeah. So good. pretty glorious. Yeah. It was amazing. It was like a, yeah, so uh, those were fun. To watch. Where is that? Uh, it was in one of the Lollygaggers channels, I think. Okay. Like my, uh, like either I'll the general or the episode uh, discussion. One of the two. Uh, all right. Speaking of asses, uh, Jeremy, who are you playing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Well, thank you so much. I'm playing Mercutio Salvador Giovanni, a service cheat of my friends. I'm a, a cat lord, a gentleman explorer, and you know, just... Um, Trying really hard to think of an angle where I don't die today. Yeah, that's a. You tell me, tell me which angle you think of. You got a few minutes still, but uh, keep thinking because it's gonna be. Yeah, it's interesting. You guys are in a little bit of a pickle. A little bit of a pickle. Uh, and Denny, aren't you the one? I I think you're the one that got <laughs> Lamb killed, right? It's entirely your fault, right? <laughs> I don't see how she kind of jumped <laughs> underneath it. Under her own okay. court. It was completely badass, and I respect it. Um, you know, she went out the way you know she lived, right? Uh, yeah. And then uh, finally, <laughs> who who is that down there? We got uh, we got Teapot. I'm not sure which version, but we have Teapot. You got a ten year older version of Teapot. Yeah. Who doesn't know how he got here or any of these people or what he's doing? Oh my god, this is so funny. Uh all right. So, quick summary. Uh, up and so you all obviously were prophets of the true mother, right? You're all uh following these these various uh, signs and such heading west and you're supposed to <laughs> it's, you're supposed to figure out how to get up to space i think is sort of what we've we've talked about i think that's that's what it is so you have this large cylindrical key is what, what did i write you have this large cylindrical key that somehow will help you achieve your goal of ascending to the sky like the shamans of old that you have interpreted as going to space uh, has allowed you to unlock the entrance to the tomb of the dragon also rises, which had previously been submerged beneath this mercury filled lake. All of this is while you are on a job for the purple hazers, uh, which is a, uh, a body snatching network across the, the, the grasslands. It's a very time sensitive job of which you are uh, more than halfway through. So you have 29 and 56 days. Uh, and you're supposed to go to the Fallen Umber, which is still about a week away plus discovery time. So anywhere probably between about a week and two weeks away. Uh, so you have somewhere between seven and 14 days left. So there's still a little bit of time there. Uh, failure would kind of piss the network off. You know that there are bodies living inside the package. You know that they are alive. You know that their memories have suppressed. And so that's what you know what's going on in there. Uh, so last session, you guys went beneath the... You guys actually entered into this tomb. Uh, beneath the Mercury Lake. Uh, you picked a fight with this hippo-sized mechano pill bug trying to rescue all of your soul-sucked friends because inside of the pill bug were the souls of people who pa who failed their aura test. Um, and so you those that were inside, Ensign, Tango Carne, and Teapot, you also met a friend inside uh, who was going to tell you all of their secrets, right, uh, about this place and about how they've hidden and stuff like that. But because of the fight going outside, people were yanking cylinders out, stuff was breaking, and their soul got dispersed before they could fill you in on everything. Uh, on the bright side, you did manage to defeat that pill bug, and you did free your the, the soul sucked friends. Uh, but Lamb did uh, did suffer essentially death, uh, at least the way that a satrap does have death, some sort of disconnection of like software from hardware so she just needs a reboot but the reboot is 
far deeper into the into the the grass. It's probably an old restore point. <laughs> yeah, it's a restore point. It's literally a save point, right? Which is I think pretty cool. Khalil did manage to get that special brew coffee, which means that Lamb has been able to stay up and alive for a little while longer, but she won't be here for that much longer. Uh, let's see. After you defeated the pill buck, you started to explore the facility. You found this really big reactor. You found a bunch of weird techno, like this the, this treasure, this tech stuff like that. And you also found a gateway. Uh, and, and it was really funny because before stepping through the gateway, Lamb had a little heart to heart with Satrap, asking Teapot to do one last thing before before she died, like it was her dying wish. And then everyone went through the gateway, with the exception of Ensign. And part of the gateway sickness that Teapot felt was uh, he lost his memory over the past 10 years. So, you know, it happens. And uh, even worse, that gateway took you all to some remote, massive hub of gargantuan, inscrutable, Cthulhu-ish-like machines. So these these big, strange things. All of which have now turned their attention to you as you have stepped through the gateway. But before before we get into that, I figure we should answer the question everyone wants to know is, um, what's Ensign doing? Uh, what's what's happening there? So let's I mean, just walk us through um, what he's doing. Just kind of curious. Yeah, so there was like a bunch of stuff to move up to the, the we got some the, loot. Uh, caravan. Yeah, mm-hmm. the loot. So uh, desperately trying to regain some confidence of his strength. He's been kind of overexerting himself there, carrying everything back up. Uh, probably a little bit out of it. Didn't really like not being able to have his muscles to help him through a scenario. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's probably very uh, depressed <laughs> and just dealing with that. Um, I think it'd be a while before he would even really notice and like get his head out of that space before you'd even notice that anyone's gone. Mm -hmm. Uh, It'd probably be like three trips back and forth before he'd be like, I haven't seen anyone in a while. Uh, That'd probably be like good five, 10 minutes before he'd, I I guess it depends on how far or how long it would take. So yeah, we went, we went pretty fast at the end, but this, this place is enormous. So it would have probably taken them like a good 45 minutes to descend into the bowels of the, of the, sort of the the structure and then you would probably you know coming and going coming and going figure i would say probably like maybe maybe you 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 might be suspicious after like an hour after one trip of not seeing anybody at all like you you know who knows that's that's kind of up to you but it it wouldn't be right away it definitely wouldn't be right away right uh but dan is right you did you'd get some some magical items you got some rainbow grenades you got to get a ray gun like a lingish disintegrate array. You got some weird helmet. You got some bracelets. Uh, you got, mm. uh, yeah, you got some soul. I think you got some soul canisters, plasmic converter, stuff like that. So you got some cool stuff. All right, enough stalling. Let's go ahead and uh, let's let's get back to this. So the, as yeah, ensign, of everyone? yeah, yeah, yeah. So as ensign is just you know. Moving things back and forth. We start Working. up again. What, you guys are all inside. You just you have, you have stepped through this gateway. You look up. You see, ultimately, what looks like these absolutely gargantuan, like they're huge creatures. You see some of those pill bugs, very similar to the ones that you the one that you fought inside of the structure. But there's there's several of them, and they are far smaller than the creatures that are now currently kind of looking at you eyes that kind of ocular singular red eye kind of refocusing shifting here and there uh you can see a few are just sort of through the air kind of starting to float in your direction you can hear like a rumble on the like on the ground and when you look down you feel like everything is metal as as far as the eye can see some kind of metal in all sorts of different directions you see these distant huge structures with like these different rings of lights that are sort of powering up, powering down, powering up, powering down. Uh, And as you step through, you're inside for maybe 10 seconds before you suddenly start hearing this alarm go off. This, this, uh, This kind of repeated, heavy, long buzz that is a little bit disquieting. And so the ones, those giant creatures that didn't notice you initially now turn, all look, and you see like a race 
all of them begin to stumble towards you. I need everyone to make an aura test. This is this is to see who shits their pants. Quite literally. Uh, all right then. Well, my pants will be loaded. Oh, <clears throat> Ensign, you don't have to do it, obviously. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm clenching as tight as I can. Uh, don't forget DC to take your heroics, everyone. Yeah, take your heroics. DC 15. <laughs> no. Okay. Chuck, your private roll and stuff. Oh, no. Wow. I thought only Melissa cheated. No, that was me. I got like, oh, 11. look at that. I got a natural 20. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I, didn't. I, didn't. I got an 11 initially and then a 3 with one heroic. I'm going to have to burn another one. Okay. All right. Uh, 16. Who failed? I did. I did. How clear do you? I wasn't sure if you I failed. I failed, failed, failed? again, like a 5. Okay. The three of you failed. You get to make a choice. Uh, you can... Uh, Fight, flight, or freeze. Uh, in the face of like these incredibly alien, strange, inscrutable, and in, like bigger than the buildings that you've seen in the Violet City are now moving at you with incredible speed. The earth is shaking. Lights are there's explosions that are occurring in the distance. Uh, so you all get flight, fight, or freeze, whichever one you want. The three of you pick each for yourselves. Flight. Which, what would you, okay. I mean, as reasonable as I think it would be to run away, I don't know where I'm at or who I'm with or what's going on. So probably freeze. <laughs> okay. So we got a freeze, we got a flight and then uh, lamb. What were you going to do? Freeze. Okay. So the sat traps both freeze in place, partially in fear, partially in awe of these like massive mm -hmm. machines. And then teapot just confusion over what the hell's going on. Khalil, you could, so there's basically two things you could do. You can either flee back through the gate uh, or you could try to flee and find a place to hide. Uh, which are wh what do you think Khalil would do? In this sort if of the gate's still situation? open, Khalil would dive through the gate. Okay, so Khalil, you dive through the gate, and I'm gonna need you to as die as this happens. <laughs> not necessarily, maybe. Uh, go ahead and roll. Hang on one sec. This is gonna be at disadvantage. Okay, go ahead and roll an aura test at disadvantage. Okay, can I spend a heroic to just make it normal and not yes. disadvantaged? Okay, yes. so I will do that because I have a zero aura. Okay. No bonus. Oh, oh no. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow, that's awful. Oh, God. Do, you, do you have another heroic? Nope. <laughs> oh, God. Is there some way wow. we can stretch this for like another 40 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> I would like to start this filibuster now. And, uh... <laughs> actually, I will read from the phone book. So oh, we okay. do have five actually left from last session. Oh, uh, audience purchase. We have banked okay. rolls. Yes. Okay. Yes. You definitely want to use one of those, Bert, because a one would probably nerf your character for a little. All right, too. I'm just going to use one play. though. If I'm okay. nerfed, I'm nerfed, and that's just how okay. it goes. Yeah. Hey, there you go. Maybe. <laughs> Jeff doesn't look any different there. Very oh no, no, you're okay. It's well, no, the one. Roll a d6 and add it to the one. Don't don't reroll. Oh, it. oh yeah. Oh god. Roll a. D6. That's okay. As long as you don't get. As long as a natural one is awful. Okay. Nice. Okay, you're good. Okay. All right. And so, as you dive back through the portal, you realize that the the passage this time. Uh, doesn't isn't as smooth as it was the first time going through, as if potentially moving through the gateway so many times in very close succession is a very, very bad thing to do. Uh, Ooh, thank you. Your head begins to just pound. You feel as though like your temples are caving in on yourselves. You can feel your skull rattling around, the blood sloshing. You can almost start seeing spots in your eyes as you flop down back into the compound beneath the lake. Uh, roll a d4. One. Uh, not so bad. Okay, you lose one thought. As uh, okay. Yeah. My okay. only my only thought is this permanent or temporary? Uh, this I this can be healed, but it's one of those week long actions okay. to heal. Mm -hmm. As you uh, effectively you have 
you have some sort of brain damage, but healable brain damage uh, that can Nothing potentially Nothing the coffee won't fix. Okay. <laughs> so then we go Be back and answer to everything. Let's go back inside. Uh, those of you who didn't fail, which I believe was Tango and MSG, yeah. what are you two mm -hmm. doing as these, as like a herd of these massive machines are stumbling towards you? Uh, man, um, what, we could talk to him. I mean, if you really want to, um, or we could run away. Mm, I think you, MSG would start like doing that really creepy body stretching nonsense and trying okay. to wrap as much of himself around the people that are frozen. Okay. So like basically his tail, like a butt cheek around one person, <laughs> an arm around another person. Such a hero. <laughs> okay. okay. And then okay. just try and pull himself to the gate, hoping that if he manages to get through, if he's wrapped himself around others, maybe he'll be able to like pull them with him. Okay. Uh, Tango, what are you doing? Oh man. Uh, so what was the, there was a bunch of people that froze. Yeah, so both the sat traps are, are essentially frozen in place, either in awe yeah. or in fear of these things. MSG just wrapped himself around, like did as he did his like you yeah. know, fantastic, you know, stretchy thing around the two of them, and is trying to like crawl, drag them back. He's moving fairly slowly, and these things are mm -hmm. moving extraordinarily quickly. What are you? What do you want to do, Tango? Um. Mm, all right. So. Uh, teapot. I'm sorry, uh, and I'm gonna soul juice teapot to help him run away. Okay, uh, roll soul, soul juice. What's your what's your your defense score there, Dan? Uh, it's fifteen. Okay, so you gotta hit a fifteen with your soul juice. Oh god. Okay. Okay. You can do great. it. I'm gonna say I roll an advantage as well because he just lost all of his memories uh, for the I'm past ten years. Like, oh, oh, oh. His brain is probably super super prepped for this like it's open the runway is clear <laughs> uh first one was an 11. oh no uh, yeah i don't have any heroics either you should have so one for the start of the session i used it to get up to the 50. Oh, okay. oh that's oh, i had damn. to use two i had one left over <laughs> got three left uh yeah there are three audience ones if you want to use them i'll use one because i yeah you can you need do a, it four i think you can do it <laughs> sorry teapot i tried so tango you try to get in his brain uh-huh but and, and you, you know you guys have known each other you guys have been with each other for weeks months at this point right but like you get inside and it's just like this foreign place like you don't even like the memories that he's saying like his, his identity it's just who who is this person this isn't the person that you know like, this, this is this crazy is... i've taken small vacations here before like yeah. someone's changed the furniture and like <laughs> oh man all right he didn't okay. sign's painted a different color <laughs> uh, uh, and yeah MSG, make a strength, uh, make a strength test to see if you can drag them to the. Gr if you fail this, then I'm gonna let the robots here, the machines, get an action. Oh, uh, strength, of course. Um, <laughs> I'm going to uh, spend a rook to try and do this with advantage. Advantage, okay, fair enough. This is gonna be the mightiest butt cheek grapple crawl you've ever seen. Not bad. Mm, let's see. I think I'll take that. I'm assuming the 14 is not enough. Yeah, since you're trying to do both, I was I was gonna set it at 15. If you try to do one, you can just get a. You, it's an 11. So an 11 will get you one of them. 15 would get you both. You have okay. Two left. I I actually have one of my own heroics left. I'll I'll spend it. Oh, okay, you got. And it. I'll I'll add a d6, which will. If you get a six, it's actually technically a natural 20. Oh, so close. five. Okay. It's close, so, but not quite. So as Tango Carney is trying to get into Teapot, like he gets in, he scrambles. Tango, you get a little disoriented. MSG wraps himself around the two of them and just, just pulling himself through. Fingernails kind of getting clawing through the metal, uh, the metal tiles. 
And you do manage to get all three of you through the gate, which means only Tango Carney is left behind temporarily. Uh, so everyone who just who just went through, go ahead and roll uh, an aura test at disadvantage for gator sickness. I'll go ahead and and spend my one heroic to. I'm just getting yeah. them all right now. This is great. Spending my last heroic as well. Okay, I did better this time. Sixteen. I did better this time. No symptoms. Smooth. Woo. You as well, Jeremy. Wow, we we all you made too, it through. Man. All three of you, sixteen and nineteen. No symptoms. Nothing. Nothing bad, but also nothing good. Uh, so yeah, you get through, uh, a, you know, some of, I would say whatever counts as shit and pants for sat traps is, is probably what's in your suits right now. MSG, you're probably a little sore. You see Khalil kind of hands on the head, just squeezing his eyes look a little bloodshot as if he might've something, something went wrong with him. He looks, he looks a little out of it and you look back and you don't see Tango. I'm just going right, to lay on the ground now for a minute. Tango, uh, you're you're just a floating blue bubble as yeah. suddenly you are surrounded by what looks like four or five of these you don't even, you can't even tell if they're different. Some of them look like these flying mechanical worms with these big bright red eyes out front. Others what just looks like a tall cylinder on top of like this springing uh, springing little step that just sort of hopping one after the other towards you. Then there's this massive crab-like creature that is skittering along that just seems to be crawling over top of the others. And you see this big bright green light just swoop down in front of the gate and it encompasses you. Uh, oh. Go ahead and roll an endurance test. Okay. Oh. Got a 13. All right. You are stunned. Uh, DC 15. Okay. So you feel yourself once. It's a similar feeling uh, to when you got Ghostbustered, uh, yeah. and it's that you don't feel any real capacity to move uh, mm. or kind of shift around. Like you can't. You can't seem to propel yourself uh, through the light, and you watch as like they just continue to circle round and round you, and you can see like this massive, tiny like they're tiny little eyes, but the 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 front of this crab is just massive as it kind of leans down, and it starts shooting its this giant claw, this feeler like into the green light to try to poke at you, and it just its its claw just constantly goes through you, and then you just hear it kind of speak to the other. And then the like giant worm, as they seem to be communicating in some kind of language. The giant hopper one, that big cylinder that's on a singular sp- uh, like spring, is gonna kind of fire down what looks like some kind of napalm in your direction, uh, which explodes. And if it was anyone but you, would probably yeah. really, really hurt. Wow. Uh, be bad. But because it's you, it doesn't actually hurt you because it would only hurt a corporeal creature. Mm-hmm. And that just seems to confuse them even further. And so this Amazing. thing just shifts down and then like a reverse nesting doll just gets smaller and smaller and smaller until it's just this one like 10 foot tall glistening metal cylinder with like a curving top, almost like a pencil eraser that's just shifting and shining lights on it as if it's studying you in some way. Um, and then finally, the worm creature will go next. Uh, and so the worm creature is just going to try, is just kind of swirling around you, swirling around you, goes into the green light, doesn't seem to be affected by it, and like a snake tries to constrict itself around you. Uh, which once again, because it's you, doesn't actually do anything because you're yeah, not a corporeal see. creature. <laughs> okay. Uh, wow. So at this point, um, you can go ahead and try to roll that endurance test one more time. See if you can break out of this stun. I got another 13. Although that Dan did remind enough. us in chat that we do still have two okay. heroics. It's up to you. Uh, 13 is not good. I'm enough. okay. I'm okay. Okay. For now. All right. So as you are... So that was your that was your round. We're in you know semi semi initiative here, right? Yeah. Everyone's kind of getting a go. The crab will go again. This time you see those tiny little eyes just begin to glow and glow and go. This nice bright light kind of cyan blue, and just these intense like beams, Superman like beams, just shoot down in your direction. Uh, I don't like this. No, no. 
<laughs> You're not gonna like this one. Uh-uh. Actually, it's not so bad. Take two points of thought uh, thought damage. Okay, how do you take thought damage? You just reduce the score. Oh, ah, <laughs> I was at zero anyway, so. Okay, <laughs> so you're, you're, you're effectively like broken is like sort of the equivalent right now is your brain is sort of scrambled. You can't make any real like conscious thought to it. Um, I'll say one last thing before we, uh, we, you know, before we shift back to the others, um, go ahead and I'll say roll, um, go roll charisma test. Okay. (laughs) Four. Wow. (laughs) Oh, uh, I hung out with Dan this weekend. I just soaked up all his roll luck. Yeah. That was a mistake. Okay. So can we the whole gate thing, can we see through the gate and no, see what's going on? No, okay. It's very much like a like think of it like Stargate, right? Like that kind of floating gotcha. water. Gotcha. Gotcha. So we're gonna come back to you guys now. As you're looking around, everyone's here. Ensign, maybe we'll just say, just to make it so you can play. Uh, maybe at this point you've been wandering around looking for them, or maybe you're just you know, tracking some noise as maybe Khalil was screaming in pain when he got through or something. Uh, and vomiting, you come down lots and, of vomiting. <laughs> and you see, you see MSG wrapped around two of them, kind of suddenly unfurling. You see this f- like kind of glowing sphere of a, not sphere, uh, glowing like, kind of uh, circle of a, of, a, of a gateway. You see Khalil kind of racked in pain, and you see Satrap uh, 956 Lamb and Teapot both look uh, a little bit uh, unnerved. But you don't see any sign of Tango. None of you do. What's that? Like, what happened? What did you guys do when I was gone? So many things. The what? Just, um, Make the hurting stop. Oh. Uh, well, my name is Satrap Fourteen Teapot. It's nice to meet you all. Uh, I don't know where here is or what I'm doing, but uh, that sucked. That's funny. Um, okay, is anyone like look injured? Uh, Khalil's yes. Khalil's face looks like he, you know, like his. It's almost almost like those the classic kind of blood coming out of the eyes, out of the ears. Got like things. one wandering eye that's just yeah. going off in all directions. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I'm down like go thirteen. To, I'm, go to I'm, him. They're like, do you need help? <laughs> I mean, last like, thing I remember, I was taking a shit, which I apparently continued doing when I got here, but uh, <laughs> that was somewhere else. <laughs> That's what he was last doing when he saved his backup. <laughs> he took a shit while he was saving his backup. As you do. As you do. <laughs> it was a really good shit. The only time he could find time. <laughs> you, you don't... You don't remember all of our travels? The uh, travel what of? travels? The, the true mother? The who? Or... <sighs> What? What indeed? Mm-hmm. We just is this had something a, that could just, just happen to you guys? So I'd point at Lamb and. Uh, also, who ruined my suit? Y- y- you. I, I mean, I I did some of the damage, but that's more on the inside, you know. What year is it? Uh, I I don't know what year it is right now, but ten years ago. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> now minus the ten. Year minus ten. <laughs> Uh, so it seemed that the machines have eaten part of your brain. Oh. You I don't remember that happening. Often. But I apparently... Uh, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> it, you know, it's okay, though, Teapot, because, uh, 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 Teapot, we are all good friends. I'm MSG. I'm your best friend. We've known each other forever, for ages. And we're glad you're here with us and you're safe. And I know that was very scary. And I'm so sorry about that. I, I didn't know you 10 years ago, though. No, no, you didn't. But we met nine years ago. and We've been so close <laughs> ever since. Oh. Oh. Um, oh. Yeah, we would. Uh, 
you know, we've gone on a lot of adventures together. Uh, we learned about the true mother together. And, uh, you know, we're going to find a way into space. Oh, that and, sounds like a bad idea, but... I mean, you've seen these mechanical abominations. Now, there's a bad idea, but... Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, can't, can't argue with that. So, does this... Does going to space really sound so bad now that you've seen that? Don't you want to go to space and get away from that? Ah, uh, did we not just do that? They'll come for you again in your sleep. Oh, my God. Anything but that. What will? Oh, the ancient mechanical whores over there. The ones that are maybe still eating Tango. I don't know if they can really get to him, though. We should probably Where's Tango? about that. He's, he's, uh, I don't know who that is, but there was a purple fart that was back there. <laughs> purple fart. <laughs> <laughs> can't argue with that. <laughs> He tried like, to make he's, me. He's through there. And I'm like, he tried to make me the... smell him, and uh, <laughs> it's he, very strange. He is through there. Uh, is he okay? Probably um, not. They were very large creatures. They seemed like they could do a lot of uh, uh, damage. I mean, he's he, not fleshy like us, so you know, maybe he's fine. Is it normal to like check the check the health of a fart? Well, when when you're, when you're uh, part sentient of group, ones, yes. You, oh, you look out for oh. each other in the group. Oh, I, I would have grabbed him if I could. It's just it's really hard, you know, know, to grab slippery. yourself around a fart. You know, I, yeah, and my butt cheek was already wrapped Popped around right you, as it were. I much appreciate it. Um, and though it may seem like I'm turning my back on the appreciation of saving me, I think I'm going to go back and see if I can get it. I'm not. Do you really go back in? Do you uh, want me to keep a. For this. Uh, maybe, I have an idea. Plane. What if I keep a hand on you and I'll stretch and I'll stay over here? Oh, does anybody have like a, a yeah, rope? I have some rope, some cabling. There's, there's cabling everywhere, right? <laughs> Yes, that, there are. That sounds and I'll bad. hold the other end to anchor it. So I'm strong. Better idea. You just I'll tell uh, like clean my pants. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're so helpful. <laughs> so, Melissa, are you going back inside? Uh, no, it sounds like we're going to try to throw a rope or something. Or wait, are you wrapping well, up? Well, he can't grab really tie a rope around, around you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think yes, that's what it is. Because Tango, unless he's unless he's juice somebody, he can't he can't grab. Yes, I am going through. Okay. I'd make a you, suggestion, but I don't know to make the suggestion now. As you as you <laughs> step back through Satrap, I need uh, Satrap uh, nine five six lamb. Please roll uh, at triple disadvantage. So roll three and take the worst. Uh, oh Anora my test. gosh! How gracious! Yeah. Can we just say I fail and move on? <laughs> well, uh, it's not a how fail. fail. It's about the effect. It's about which what, what happens. Sure, sure. Yeah. I mean, I know it doesn't matter for you because you're you're walking dead man, dead woman. Dead sound Wouldn't it be quite sound terrible sound. if you got there and don't remember what you're doing? Also, <laughs> that would be wonderful. We do have. Um, how how long should I wait on the rope before going in to get you? Give it a thirty count. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty quick between me, like, shitting myself and getting here. All right, what's the lowest? Oh, damn. Uh, so there's an eight, but we potentially have two other thingies that I can add to it. Or does that not really matter? Eight's not too bad. Nausea, nausea and vomiting, minus one agility, minus one charisma. Yeah, what uh, do I need stats for? Yeah, I mean, there, there's basically anything three or less is really bad. And I'm not broken because I had extra of each of those. So Okay. So you step back through and you now see that there are these sort of like there's these four fairly gargantuan creatures, one of one of which is actually now not even gargantuan anymore, is more like about ten feet or so high. And you can see there's this big bright green light. You can see Tango is literally inside it, and there's all these little pincers and like kind of strange kind of glowing cutting torch type things, not physical, but they seem to be, they seem to be, all of them seem to have some kind of 
uh, sort of ethereal quality to it. Like they figure it out that to affect him, they can't use physical tools, but they're using all of these other types of tools. And all you see is just like this amoeba, like <laughs> kind of moving around as he's essentially being poked and prodded and kind of cut through. You see at one point, he's just kind of split like mitosis right in half. And then they kind of shove him back together. And then you see like a, this like spark of suturing that sort of stitches him back. And they're just rapidly like, experimenting in all sorts of different ways at one point each each one of these these different creatures just sort of rips a different part of tango off and they all are kind of like playing around within this green light with like the the strange like ethereal quality of, of tango here and there and then they're kind of smushing it back together it's just kind of just horrific soul torture that seems to be happening it's fine everything's fine <laughs> okay so um lamb is going to use her uh, radiant gun to try to um, take out kind of the whatever machine seems to be the most effective at what it's doing uh the crab uh yeah. most certainly yeah the, it's most it's, it seems to be the one that's most vicious and delighting most in what it's doing the others are kind of just kind of this cold curiosity but you get the sense that this one's just really kind of enjoying what it's doing and then uh, tell me when 30 seconds hits, because that is when I am pulling the rope, and if nothing happens, okay. I'm going through. Okay. Uh, so, so go ahead and roll your attack. I'm trying to see if there's any skills or abilities that I have that I can use. I don't think so, unfortunately. Yeah. Pull up the stats for this thing. So I'm just going to have my... It's weird to see it. AC, that's three digits. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to roll this at advantage. Okay. So I'm going to roll it once and then roll it again. Um, 13 is a miss. All right, and then I'm going to take the other one to add a d6. Okay, go ahead. Because I'm trying to save Carne. So... Roll your d6. 16. 16 is a miss as you Gosh, fire oh. your rainbow gun at this thing. And although you clearly hit it, the thing's big. It's You can't miss hitting it. It seems to have no effect. Whatever kind of contour shielding it has just seems to absorb it. But it quickly turns its attention in your direction at this point. But then you notice as... It starts to close in on you. You feel this like crazy shaking in the ground again as if something is closing in once more. And you notice, and Tango, maybe you do too. Maybe you have some some vague, like it's been a very painful process with, with, with everything that's been happening yeah. to you. Not like your brain is probably scrambled at this point. But the two of you notice a familiar sight uh, speeding towards this group of, uh, of machines and where the two of you are by this gate. As you notice the megapede uh, that you all freed uh, from, uh, oh, I think that was from the, the sort of the Blue Lands, right? Like, yeah, yes, were, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. You see this, it, and it's and it's quite large. It's not quite as big as this giant crab, but it's certainly the same. It's certainly bigger than this kind of swirling worm, and it's definitely bigger than that weird kind of cylindrical pattern that you see now. But it comes hurtling up uh, at great speed. And it just seems to sort of intersperse itself between you and the giant crab as the crab kind of comes charging at you. It kind of takes the block and they, they kind of start squabbling a bit. There's like a, sh you know, shuffle, shuffling of things. It's like a kaiju fight for like a good, you know, five, ten seconds before like all of these weird screeching sounds. You hear like, uh, these, these weird kind of, it's almost like metal. Like it's just eating away at your ears and at your soul, Tango. And, uh, and it's at that point that it seems like the green light begins to fade. And like the, the piece that, that the ripped apart bits of Tango just kind of gently float to the ground, like almost like just like these really slow motion droplets of rain and he's just in these tiny little pieces. What do you want to do? Uh, uh, like snot on the wind. Like snot on the wind. <laughs> um. <laughs> The real question is, he snot on a boiling hot sidewalk. <laughs> like a uh, like a snot bubble in the wind. 
<laughs> Liam will go over and um, she'll kind of relocate because um, Satrap's kind of always have that kind of helmet looking thing. Okay. And so kind of like lift the helmet up a little bit so that if mm -hmm. he's able to get sniffed up. Okay. So Lamb goes down, pulls the helmet. <laughs> and Tango lines him up with her credit card and <laughs> gets snorted up one more time uh, into into Lamb. And you take advantage of this little fight that seems to be have, have broken out between these different machines. Do you hurry back into the gateway, I'm assuming? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, Tango, go ahead and roll at disadvantage. And Lamb, go ahead and roll at quadruple disadvantage. Roll four, oh take the worst. Tango, roll <laughs> twice, take the worst. Wasn't this the thing that didn't affect ultras? Oh, yes, you're right. Thank you. I totally forgot about it. Yeah, you're fine. You're absolutely right. Ultras are immune to gator sickness, which does nothing to alleviate popular suspicions about them. Four. Oh, there's a four. It's not a three or less. It is, three. however, uh, the same. It's the same thing Bert had with Khalil. Like terrible headaches. Uh, minus one d four thought. So your 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 head. I mean, you just snorted Tango. That's probably what's giving you the headache as you <laughs> yeah. leap back through the gate. Uh, as right as the thirty second count comes, and Ensign just kind of gives a tug, and it's like. <laughs> The muscles of Ensign just managed to teleport the two of them at greater speed than, you know, the speed of light as you just yank them through and you go stumbling <laughs> down into the base of this this sunken fortress. Um, Tango, go ahead and write uh, uh, memories, terrible memories uh, on your sheet somewhere. Okay. We'll come, that will come back at some point. Okay. You guys are all back in the tomb. So Lam is gonna um, just again, kind of just like pull that off, and she's, she's just like, oh, oh, oh god, oh, and then she's just gonna like do like a massive, like a massive sneeze. Now flies Tango. Oh, the fart's back. <laughs> <laughs> I love new teapot. <laughs> just lying there and mostly conform consolidated puddle on the ground. That sucked, man. You, you don't really look so good. Is there... If I could pour you a drink, I would. Could someone get my aloe plant? It's on the battle ass. I could go up and grab it for him. Uh, yeah, unless you get... share what happened with yeah. everyone that like they were just I mean they were just like they were going to just draw and quarter him and then I mean I was going to try to do something but I don't really think it was going to work and then out of nowhere guess who came back who I'll never guess the wasn't Mega me <laughs> Megapi yeah. to the rescue it it was the queen. Yes. Uh, who? Uh, what? I mean, do we have any paper or anything to write with? I don't recall voting for sure. her. Yeah, that's fine. I want uh, to basically write a message saying, I love you so much. Thank you. And fold it up into a paper airplane and throw it through the gate. Done and done. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I'll make sure to point out in my floor puddle, like, uh, Someone's rearranged Teapot's furniture. What does that mean? Who was in my house and rearranged my furniture? Your your head furniture, you know, the stuff that I usually hang out in. Oh, I don't... What? You used to have a sofa, now you have a settee. I mean, we don't want to mean to alarm you, but you've lost about ten years worth of your memory, it seems. Uh, mm. That doesn't make any sense. I think you, you made a good point yourself. Look at the outside of your suit. That's yeah, where I've I mean, seen you be shot, and that's where you were stabbed, and that's where somebody tried to drag you, drag you into a lake full of mercury. That sounds terribly unpleasant. But we saved you, and that's what's important. We are friends, Teapot. Did I make mistakes getting into this mess? This sounds like a terrible group of people to be with. <laughs> uh, 
Ripley? It's cool, man. We're working for God. We've seen visions of the true mother and we're going to ascend to space. I'm pretty sure you were assigned to us as a punishment. But I will point out that his his furniture, it's a lot nicer, but it's just it's different. It's fresh. Less worn in. Yeah. I mean Yeah, it took me off guard. I couldn't do anything to help you because like you know, I, I sometimes when I take naps, I'll take naps in your guys' heads when you aren't looking. And like it was really weird. It sounds really weird. We may need to like uh set some boundaries or something. No, it's fine, man. Listen, I don't get to dream anymore, so I'll just hang out with yours. I don't know that I'm going to be dreaming too much longer. Oh, anyway, right. Um, all of this has taken quite a bit out of me. So, I mean, is you've really like you've given so much. You've just been like a real trooper. Thank you, Lamb, you're just the best. Um, thank you, Lamb. Thank you. I can't claim to fully understand how your people do things on the whole passing and whatnot. Um, but if there's something we could do in respect for your, you know, dedication, let us know. You know, uh, we, we do actually have these crystals. In fact, it's kind of more an inconvenience. Sub with the crystals. Yeah, I mean they should be pretty close by, right? Um, right. We've got a bit right. of traveling, so we're, oh. we're currently at Waystone. So many questions. I don't, know where you, I don't know where you were ten years ago. I'm guessing not at Waystone, but that's where we happen to be. No. no. <laughs> Is there any way to like back up your mind right now? Not out, out in the wild, like like it. So basically, the the, the, the equipment needed. You have to yeah. be in. in... It, it, you got to be near it, and yeah. not be in by one sounds like such a bad idea. It's been a, it's it's been a bit of time since I've hmm. done one. I hopefully is it possible will. to make it, or do you really just have to, so like mechanically, you can only do it in town. I, I don't so, I don't know that I've seen too many of them that are traveling necessarily there yeah it's it's specifically an outpost so it has to be a sat trap outpost so there's a there's a handful of them uh conceivably you could go and try to race back to the last uh sarah which had a sat trap outpost but i would say probably i don't think she would last that long um because basically the coffee just gave her like an extra day or two as opposed to like a full week and that's how far back the sarah would be It'd be like a, a full week's week's time um, but if you guys wanted to figure out some way, like I'm fine with thinking, you know, like if we, if we think about that, it's fine. Um, oh, otherwise God. she needs to go very, very far to the spectrum run, which is about one, two, well, now, three, four, five, there's six. There's a whole bunch of extra space in his head. Could we like copy uh, the new stuff that uh, you've uh, learned uh, since you're back it's, up into it's him? A, it's and... a crystal that saves that doesn't work that really way. have multiples in a crystal. So I, I, got I have a crystal. An idea. I can give you my crystal that you can use for the last backup, but it's okay. Just uh, we're transporting these stones that have personalities in them. What if we just booted one of them and put you in it until we could find a suitable body? Wait, I I I got an idea too. Like maybe uh, you know, I just get up in your nose and just pull you out. And, and you can do that. I don't know. Why not? That's you just got to think outside the box. And like, if you think you guys as meat suits or boxes. Do we have any of those horrible canisters that rip you out of your body anymore? You do, actually. We do. You do have some soul canisters. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Can you could be an ultra, too. We could like. We I don't like know that you should turn her into a fart. We could co-pilot the battle ass. 
one of you takes the front and the other one takes the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one is the pilot, the other is the gunner. Oh my Who God. forms the head? <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. And where would Phil live? Phil needs to find a home. Phil could hang out on the battle ass. What? A, like, I mean, uh, I've got my butt. Is special he... Phil needs? If, and Lamb will turn to Teapot and just say, if you have the space, Phil might feel more comfortable with you if that was um, too much of an imposition. Yeah, you know, I don't normally just invite random Phil's into me, but uh, <laughs> maybe if we got to know each other first. I, I think Phil and and your um, your land squid have made their acquaintance. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really remember him either. You you might want to say hello. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, there's a lot of things going on. <laughs> <laughs> if your if your land squid might not mind a roommate. Yeah, I mean the two of them are fast friends, and it's it's possibly Phil's only friend, and to deny them their friendship would be cruel. And you, oh, I'm, clearly, I'm not, I don't got problems with them being friends. I just yeah. I don't know them being inside of me. <laughs> Well, but of course, I mean, you wouldn't deny them that friendship. You're, you're not a proponent of animal cruelty. You've never been in the time that I've known you. That and sounds Phil, like a good trade. Phil being the pickpocket that Phil is, Phil is, while you're having this conversation, he's kind of snuck around and he's sort of like <laughs> kind of poking <laughs> your suit <laughs> for Lance going to come out. Finally, can I come out and play? Like, yeah. <laughs> can Lance could come out and play? Um, exactly. So here's what I, I mean. Here's what I think we can do. Like, we could say, I think this, because like the soul canister, because she doesn't actually become an ultra. Like, it's like that's a different process. But like, you could, you could store her in one of these soul canisters, and then when you get to Spectrum Run, that would basically like preserve all of her XP gains and all that kind of stuff that she's had so far, so she doesn't reset to basically a level like one character. So yeah, and that. then instead of like her getting a new body and then uploaded the backup, we would just put the soul canister. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah, that's, I mean that's that's basically how I think it because like the the. Because the crystals are, because the body itself, I think the crystals replicate the personalities of the stored satraps. And you can, if its body is killed, is like when you use the crystals to essentially re like replace like the personality. But you guys are going to use the soul canister instead to replace the personality. So we'll say that saves, I mean, it's going to save you money and it's going to save her XP is basically what will happen. And so she won't get reset to like when she was last there or however long ago that might have been. So I mean that that I mean that works for me if it works for you guys. Well, you sounds, sounds very strange. There. Yeah, and when you're about to give out, then we can soul canister you and go get your new body made. Can we like mod the soul canister so it has like some sort of screen or something on it for us to interface with her? <laughs> like a little <laughs> digital display. <laughs> yes. We'll make it like we'll make it like one flash for yes, two flash for no, like flash, nice. flash something like that. Yeah. Okay. What that so, Tamagotchi interface? <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, I forgot exactly. to clean up after. It's like Lamb a one today. bit graphic. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> all right. So, with all the, with this planned out, um, we'll say you guys clear out the the tomb, everything, everything you could get. I gave you the list last week. Um, and then uh, you get your canister back from the door. Uh, so you have that back as well. You also notice that when you take the canister out, it like refills, uh, which gives you, I would say probably gives those of you who have any kind of mechanical ability or anything like that, probably you, you, you might think of this as some kind of like, almost like a battery in some way, right? Like, mm -hmm. like, a, like a power cell. Uh, is sort of what this seems like. And it kind of powered up the door to allow you to open and then kind of depowered everything as you take it out as you realize the door no longer opens when you when you pull the canister out. 
Um, but other than that, yeah, you will say it probably takes a whole day between um, kind of cleaning everything up, getting everything out of the Is my kite the still alive or did or – did, Your kite uh, is still alive. Pet. Your kite's okay. still alive. Yeah. Because uh, the only person we lost – I think the only person we lost was the NPC who had all the answers for everything that was going on. <laughs> it's the only one. Yeah. Everybody else. Everybody else made it out okay. It's total random roll. Ish. Okay-ish. <laughs> Okay-ish. Okay -ish. Yeah. Okay -ish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Not quite so the then, same person and in a uh, bank tube. And we're going to say... Uh, halfway mark. <laughs> Take <that's>... your defense. <laughs> okay. Oh, everybody get a heroic. Yeah, everyone yeah, take yeah, a heroic. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> we desperately Ooh. need them. It's and true. then we'll say, Lamb, um, counting today, you have five days left. So you'll have four days left before you, you feel like a full... You know, but you can probably just do it now if you want to. It's up to you. Uh, okay, so the next question is, is like, what do you guys want to do now? So you're at, in terms of your running quest, uh, the job you're on, you've got 30, you're at 26 days left. I have uh, no idea where I'm at. So, uh, you know, wherever you guys are going, I guess I'm going to. So yeah, so I guess some choices you have are you could just get back on the trail, start heading to Fallen Umber, finish this quest off. You could go to one of you also have two other discoveries around Waystone that you could potentially go and try to burn some XP if you want, because uh, there was the Abbey of the Caretakers, but that was pretty far out. I think you guys didn't want to go there. Uh, there was the Mausoleum. Um. Yeah, those are basically your options. Like, we you did just take get the other two um, with us, right? Yes, you have Roncar. <laughs> you have Roncar, and you have uh, the other guy whose name I can't remember. The thief. Davor. Well, when we get up yeah, to the Davor, top, yeah. I'll, I'll go through the introduction process again. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm all for heading for Fallen Umbar to complete our deal and taking it easy so that we can take recovery time and such. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Because to restore your to restore your stats and stuff, you're gonna have to take like long rests, which in this game is a week. So, you, so yeah. you could probably because you know that you know that your contact is in an oasis somewhere around Fallen Umber, which likely implies that it's some level of of civilization. I'm okay. not gonna lie, I wouldn't be against a bit of rest. The whole being shot by little missiles just really. Unpleasant. Sounds like it. Mm. It's, Did it's we so choose? Worth it. Wouldn't we go Did to we space, choose though? to get shot by missiles? Mm. Roundabout way. Does anyone? It, I mean, it was, it was their choice to shoot us. We what? didn't start it. They, mm. they, they, they sucked us off first. Well, that sounds terrible uh what have i been doing with my life <laughs> ensign would be very excited at the fact that uh teapot has forgot who he is so now he can like reintroduce him and show off his strength again and get like a brand <laughs> new reaction from him uh so he would probably spend a lot of time like flexing and lifting things and he'd show off his uh weapon that he ripped off of a golem maharm and recount some of those tales just to try and make him <laughs> himself feel better. That sounds all very terrifying. Terrifying. I think that's exactly. the word. Exactly. Terrifying. Yeah. Uh, so you guys get back on and the you road. You did then. fine before. Yeah. You'll do fine this time. So you guys get back on the trail. Ensign is introdu reintroducing himself to Teapot and showing him all of the fancy things he can do. Uh, I need uh, Bert. Go ahead and roll a charisma test for uh, for the road. Okay. Basically, uh, I, I have to test. say though that uh, as our floating snot bubble pointed out, uh, what bad effects us together does to the brain. <laughs> as, he, <laughs> as he said, it was a nice, pristine, clean place. Now. So uh, we kind of tracked the mud in and dirtied it up. Is how I would like to look at it. <laughs> Poor right, innocent, uh... innocent, very, very, just you know, like oh, this is this is terrible. Mm -hmm. Oh goodness. 
Um, I will spend a D6. I, I okay. don't want to screw things up any more than I have to. Okay, 10. 10. Okay. Okay. All right. So you guys you guys move on beyond the waystone, uh, the graveyard. The step continues. It's flat. It's it, like the, the area kind of gets very uh, kind of tasteless, almost tone deaf. Like the color is very muted. Uh, you can see that the um, the caravan trails itself are, are, are it's basically just moving down this like really dull, very uninteresting bedrock. This long, dry gully, uh, this crumbling living stone that's just again everywhere you see it's just gray and kind of brown and kind of all sorts of different directions. Um, you can definitely tell that this looks like an area that was probably once like rich and fertile, but has like over time just really dried out and become more of a, a wasteland. Um, you can also tell like the the weather the weather itself is also quite um, like brown in some ways, in the sense that like when you look up, the clouds that are forming that haze has this sort of brownish red color to it. So there's, everything is just becomes this very dull and gross feel. About so you said you wrote a ten, right? Yes. Totally. Don't tell me what I'm doing in this place. This seems horrible. Looks like you're walking, man. Uh, so for, more broadly speaking, like I would <laughs> gladly like to fill him in on the true mother, how Why she's like come with here? the pristine, like think me, but even better and even stronger, <laughs> and a woman. Uh, and he would like. <laughs> do the best to recount it but only the parts that he cares about and uh that Beautiful. would uh, he'd spend pretty much the entire journey doing that about four days in uh you guys realize that it's been about two days since the last time you heard like any sound from the land like none like the wind doesn't really like echo through the canyons or anything like that. You don't really hear any chirping of insects or see any animals kind of scuttling about. You don't see any trees with foliage like in the branches, like like wafting around in the wind. Like even kind of just walking across the ground itself, this this kind of really beat down dirt, like everything underneath your feet is just very, very silent and dreary and kind of dull, in fact, to the point where it really kind of sort of like sense of melancholy might start to pervade the area. And and kind of adding to that is the fact that it's around this time that, Lamb, your, your body begins to fully kind of degrade and you guys go through the process of using one of the soul canisters that you just, uh, that you just recovered. And with some creative engineering, probably with Tango, I would imagine leading some of the some of the task on this, as he's the most uh, the most qualified uh, kind of removal of personality remover of, of that, and maybe even Teapot oh. with some of that innate satrap idea. You manage to uh, take Lamb's uh, Lamb's personality, and although it's not a crystal that's being stored in, you're storing it elsewhere. So instead of it being like a you know a floppy drive, it's like a CD CD ROM, so to speak, or maybe mm-hmm. C- the inverse, whatever it might Just be. Just don't right? scratch it up. <laughs> right. Oh dear. Keep God. magnets away from it. Um, we should bring her crystal too, like the her soul in a jar and a crystal. That way, in case one of you trips and breaks something, we got a backup for our backup. Is the crystal like still intact? It's just like the body was shredded. Yeah, the body basically dis- it was basically falling apart to the point where it was no longer functional. Uh, so I think the way like most and I were talking about it, it was the idea of like hardware and software kind of got separated, and there was no real way to reintegrate it. Like once the once the disintegration began to happen so until a new set of hardware is produced the software has nowhere to go and so that's why you're kind of storing it in your in your flash drive for now and lamb will um kind of repeat her kind of dying wish that she had made to teapot and then teapot promptly forgot about um, that you've oh man now he has zero context for why we're (laughs) doing it too are you sharing Just this with him or teapot? Yeah. No. So the group, because um, I'm imagining that there's some interest in this little transfer process yeah. kind of happening. Um, 
and they will just say, you know, the, all of the creativity and ingenuity and thought and effort that's going into kind of keeping me here. I just, it's just not sitting well with me that there's a box of living beings that aren't being given any opportunity and any effort being put toward them being able to live their full life. Well, no, hold on now. (laughs) We don't actually know what they're going to be used for at the other end. For all we know, they've contracted to be moved in this way to the people that are paying us to receive them. What are we doing? Do we we think that's the... (laughs) We, We were given a job with a box thinking that it was not alive individuals inside the box. And then we came to learn that it's live individuals inside. Being dead people in a box is okay also? Well, I mean, they're dead, so it's not that much difference between just the ground being relocated, but it's not live in a box. We have, they could, I mean, you you could possibly ask them, did they sign a contract? Only you put dead things in the ground. But maybe they didn't. You know what? I owe you for keeping me from dying for another time so uh i'll be right back i want to see if i can slime my way inside the box okay uh so yeah uh it's gonna be a check and the higher the better uh getting in is a lower difficulty but then getting in without leaving any sort of detectable trace is going to be a much Mm. higher difficulty okay can I donate my heroic? So DC 11 just to get in. Uh, but then okay. we'll call it a 15 to get in without any trace. So if I do... What am Did I, I turn rolling? into a bad person? Uh, I'm fine <laughs> with soul juicing. Oh, yeah. No, no. <laughs> actually, you're, you're the best of us. You're the heart of us, Teapot. You, you keep us going. Oh, oh. shit. That is very, very... Okay, yeah. You... Um, Maybe it's something with like you've you've had some out of body experiences. You're focused. Maybe it's like dying wish is motivating you. Whatever it might be, but and you know that there you can tell as you're moving through. And as an ultra, you've probably had moments where there's been defenses and securities against your people. People is a weird word, but you know what I mean. Uh, and there's there's certainly detecting. There's like certainly plenty of like security detection uh, and certain civil and you know, certain settlements and such for for potential like ultra infestation and this device this this large case that they're all stored in uh has some of that but you're but you're skilled you know like tango you've been around a while and so you're able to to sort of your first time in a box yeah oh man you you ghost in a shell this stuff pretty well and uh there are four bodies in here um and why don't you just roll d4 Okay. One. All right. So there's a guy's body. He's uh, he's definitely he's definitely a, a Rainbow Lander. Uh, there's this there's nothing. All all four of them in here look like Rainbow Landers. So humanoids essentially. Uh, no sat traps. No anything mechanical. They all look to be relatively good condition. You don't see a whole lot of augmentations or anything on them. Um, they all look to be fairly fairly middle age none of them look particularly young none of them look particularly old they all kind of somewhere maybe in like the like their 40s or so so sort of middle age um but they all look in good condition like none of them look to be uh, like physically broken or physically ill in any way um do you want to to try to get into the mind of one yeah i gotta check out the furniture okay so you pop into one uh, and we'll roll over the 20 uh, to, to like the DC to DC to get into one of these is, is pretty minimal anyway. Um, and you realize like it's like it's empty. It's like to use the furniture metaphor, you are in an apartment that has no furniture. Like there's no, there's no no couch. There's no table. There's no there's bed. It's empty. An empty husk. Yeah. However, as oh. you start shifting around you do notice that there are some things that are stored away here and there so there's like a bunch of stuff in the basement there's a bunch of stuff up in the attic here and there kind of pushed off and you you get the feeling after probably a good hour or so of exploring that there are like these suppressed memories like there's these partitions that are up and what you basically learn is that sort of 
I mean, Khalil wasn't that far off in, in his, his sort of suggestion is that they they have been contracted to donate their like they're they're they are donating their their bodies to pay off debt. So they're paying off like family debt by like donating their physical form to this sort of shady like body snatching network. And so by donating their body, like their families getting kind of getting their debt cleared or at least getting their debt paid off by these criminals. Okay. So that that seems to be what's happening. All right. Well, they have no knowledge like, though of indefinite? like what specifically they're being used for. They just know that they they like you can you can kind of get memories of them signing a specific, you know, like a like a contract okay. with a very shady looking purple cool. laser. Then I will slip back out. Do we know how long the contract is? I, I don't know. But yeah, uh, I'll, that, I'll, that's unclear. Yeah. Yeah. I'll slip back out and be like, uh, yeah, Khalil's right on this, man. Like, uh, they're consensually in there. They're to sign contracts. Like, yeah, I, I got in and out without them noticing, too. So we didn't break our end. So we can still get paid for this. But, like, you know there you see these body snatching murderers are like a fine upstanding people <laughs> i don't know if i go that far but at least they're not like full like they're not like victims in this like like it looked like they had some like family debt and they agreed to lease their bodies uh for a while to pay off their family debt so i mean like yeah, man, like they're there of their own will. And I think that if we were to like do something with them now, we wouldn't get paid and that would suck. But like also we might be fucking over their families at home by violating their contracts too. And you can see oh, Lamb's like not great. really having much energy left in her yeah um and lamb says or we could help their families pay off their debts and tell them about the word of the true mother and then we'd have four families with us on our quest for the stars i mean we're like we, we have could. Buddy. it it you, know, you know, the all touchy feely stuff is really nice, but you know what else is really nice? Cold hard coin is very nice to have, and we may need a lot of it. I, I, I would also throw out like it took a lot of work just to get that information sorted out. I mean, like I don't know if I could put their minds back together enough in a way for them to share that information are they paying us more money than we have right now a lot more <laughs> i don't know that we could pay off their debt if they're paying us more money than we already have as nice as that sounds uh, i mean i will say if they go to the stars the debts don't really matter he's got a point there is no space debt, so I hear. Yes. I don't know. I'm I'm really like kind of torn on this because like I see you Khalil's should... line of thought like money. Yeah. Are you sure there's no debt to space? Because I hear upgrade going to get his money. <laughs> 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 yeah and then also i see like lamb like you feel strongly about this too and you did like keep me from being tortured for all eternity i don't know man how about this how about this why don't we turn them in for the money and then we steal them back i like that i like stealing you sure that we're not bad people we oh, we're are. the worst. We're the worst. <laughs> we're the very best people. We are on a mission from the Holy Mother herself. You, you are a saint, Teapot. I'm getting such mixed messages here. Because Listen this way we get paid. We don't have like death prices on our head, heads. 
and we could potentially still get them back. Yeah, what would the true mother do? Uh, probably <laughs> never profits. get involved with this. Pro profits. I mean, I don't really Not know anything, profits, but, but other profits. Is it spelled the, the same? I don't know. I'm bad at spelling. And Lamb just, just looks her? over to um Teapot. I think um Ensign. Sorry. I think Ensign mm -hmm. was doing a lot of the work that was upcoming. And we'll just say, I think it's time. And you just see like the body just just like kind of power down like all the all the, like the lit parts of like the sat trap like the like the helmet bubble that usually is is sort of got a kind of a glow to it just sort of darkens a bit and kind of matches the dull the kind of saturated look of the the environment and uh you look over at the canister and much like you saw with with tango and with teapot and the others inside the inside the tomb that canister is now filled up with sort of the the soul fluid of uh, of of lamb. Well, this is all very strange. It's and now it's Phil scurrying out, kind of knocking back at a land squid's mm -hmm. pocket. Phil, you you can ride on the battle ass if you want. Like I've got Heidi cubbies built in there. Teapot made it. I did. You did. You made my battle ass. This seems like a very strange thing to build, but you did good work. Like I didn't think you're going to be able to fit the gun. Actually, that's a good question. But to take a good look at the battle ass and see how much you've learned in the last ten years. Yeah. <laughs> this is your handicraft. I you did a good job. <laughs> I don't know if this is something I should be proud of or not. <laughs> I mean, it's impressive. so much technology shoved into such a moderate gape. Just amazing. <laughs> you spent so much time figuring out, can I do this? You never really stopped to ask, should I do this to this poor little donkey? But nonetheless, here it is. Okay. So we'll say a couple more days pass as you continue to travel through the lands of Fallen Umber. Uh, and eventually you arrive at... Uh, the first signs of anything beyond dreary kind of browned land. And it actually looks almost like an abandoned sort of large plantation house in this nearby abandoned village. You got to start shifting around, moving the caravan through and looking for any signs of, of life. Um, and you can see that some of these buildings that are, uh, that are abandoned. Some of them are, are ruined. Some of them look like they've probably served as camps for, for recent people. You see this fungus that's kind of growing everywhere at night as you kind of sleep and stay, you know, for, for the rest, you can see ghosts begin to kind of emerge and move about. And they're wearing some, some weird kind of chitinous armor as they do as they're, they don't seem to be bothering anybody, but they kind of keep their distance different different than ultras they just seem nocturnal and for some reason uh you see all of these weird kind of like bipedal armadillos it seems to be like chasing around these rabbit pigs that are kind of eating the mushrooms and stuff it's just this weird ecology all throughout this uh this old plantation and one i guess like a after you kind of get a good night's sleep in the area you wake up and you notice that you are not alone uh, you all see that there are suddenly other wagons and golems that are uh, filling the area that have parked in some of these old driveways uh, that have taken up space on what used to be roads in between these neighborhoods. You can see what looks like a bunch of bone work. Uh, so when you look at them, teapot and uh, you know, especially I guess teapot, especially since you're the sort of the engineer, like you don't see the the kind of metal work that's common to like the porcelain citadel and to the sat traps. It's more bone work. And so all of these golems, these what effectively are cars or these uh, these walkers here and there, they're all made, it looks like, from reshaped bone of some kind. Um, of course, the, the gotcha is I, I don't have my Vec skills anymore because I learned them from the Vec guy <laughs> as part of yeah, the Savannah. 
you don't know the specifics of that, but I would say even as a satrap, you would be familiar okay. with certain things. Yeah. Okay. Like, okay. Huh, didn't we agree that you lost like all of your memory, but none of the skills? Like you don't know why you know the skills, but right. It was like muscle memory. Uh, but I also gave him yeah. the option if he wanted to, as like a fun RP thing of like just changing his character into what he was yeah. ten years ago and what right. he was good at ten years ago. So I yeah, because technically option. the Vec repair replaced a skill that I had in character creation so i was like that one's probably out <laughs> yeah that was like a specifically acquired one uh and so you guys notice oh. that there are also like what almost looks like conestoga wagons and things like that and uh you also notice there's a whole mess load of people uh moving about in these kind of weird almost like necromantic dark purpley robes uh here and there um and there's a first, like the first other living things that you've probably seen since you since you fought like the the like the hippo sized pill bug and the other machines. It's the first living things you've seen ever since then. Uh, but you know that you are generally about in fallen number. You've reached kind of the dead lands of fallen number, and it's just a matter of kind of kind of searching around and doing things. Um, how about everyone go ahead and roll a thought test? Uh, Dan, you can roll yours at advantage. Oh, well, <laughs> advantage was not enough. Uh, it's a pass with Chuck and Bert. Uh, let's see. Is DC 11? Uh, Actually, technically, it's more the... higher the oh, better. Okay. But yeah, 11 is the middle. I do have plus one. I'm still just bewildered. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh, nice. All right, so then, uh, okay, so so Khalil, uh, Tango, and MSG, you would recognize this caravan as a group of people that go by the name of the Great Folk. Uh, and you would know that generally they are known to be uh, bone sculptors. They're, uh, they're a group of, of, they're relatively friendly people, kind of, but they're so their own little peculiar, uh, ins, you know, insular group. Uh, but they tend to be known because of their their body shape, their, their bone shaping skills, their necro necromancy, etc. So that's what all three of you know. MSG, you have heard a very interesting rumor about them, and that the that they reproduce in a very peculiar way, that they actually eat their own dead, uh, but they only eat the meat, the bone they then use to grow their children, and that's how. <laughs> little great folk come to be and you would also know that they um they are somehow connected to uh so the, the behemoth shell which is another one of these major landmark areas and uh, nearby actually uh, and that they used to like worship these giant behemoth creatures that would travel around and so now they go to like the skeletal carcasses of them to sort of worship the bones and things like that I'll share that and I'll take a minute to think about how I feel about my own bone shaping abilities <laughs> and whether or not I can use that in advantage when talking to them. And, th and they are relatively peaceful and they trade as well. Okay, then. Uh... Lamb was the one who was tracking all of our inventory. Yeah. <laughs> didn't we didn't we sell off most of everything that we've got though in the last? Yeah, you year? got no, new we, stuff. Yeah. We got new oh, stuff. Okay. You got the mercury, the jars of mercury. I think you've got. Some I don't. New I have not gear. updated the some caravan gear. from this most recent haul of. Things, I don't so. guess it just doesn't exist. I guess it must have lost along the way. That's a shame. Well, no, uh, no. That's uh, you guys got. I know you got. I know Khalil had collected some some of the some jars of mercury. mercury him yeah. and Benson, yeah. And then you have a bunch of like vome gear, the treasures uh, and stuff. That's not really trade goods. Those are like stuff for you guys to use. Yeah. But like you, I, have, I got all that stuff recorded. I just right. was yeah. thinking about more party stuff, like the yeah. the sacks yeah. of caravan goods to take off my inventory. For sure, I know was the mercury, and, and I for sure you one. know like old x like old machinery as well like like vec like sort of, sort of like vomish tech and stuff uh sorry joe what was yeah that? 
Uh, was there anything out of the new loot? I don't remember looking through it. I, but... I, I have all the new loot recorded yeah, that, the, that I found, the, at least. You have... Okay, so the loot from the thing you've I don't got... If there's anything that we some fancy-looking bronze bracelets, uh, like bracer-type things. You've got a Vome Assimilator suit kit with that command parasite. Um, you've got six rainbow grenades. You've got a Lingish disintegrate, like a ray gun, basically. Um, and you got the, the fuel canisters, uh, and then you've got like a little key as well. Half a key. Actually. What are these? Has anyone put on these bracelets? What do they do? No, uh, I, 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 still, do something or? I have them all in my inventory since I found them. <laughs> so, oh, okay. yeah, no one's tried to use them yet. I want to try and put them on. <laughs> okay. So as you guys are waking up, you see this new group of people around. Oh, God, Joe, I'm sorry. Uh, you put the bracelets on, and all of you are watching. Maybe you're eating breakfast or whatever. You watch Ensign's kind of like, I'm going to try these bracelets on. They look pretty nice. He's pre he puts them on, and you watch as his hands, basically from the base of the wrist all the way to his fingers, just disintegrate into dust. Oh, no. <laughs> it's a very painless process. It doesn't hurt even remotely. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like instantaneous. That's a neat trick. <laughs> no. uh, I know you're showing me all your cool moves, but I didn't know you could make your hands disappear. <laughs> can think you about, back? Sir, think come back? <laughs> oh, no. you can't because you don't have hands. But I hit them against <laughs> the side of the caravan trying to get them to come off. <laughs> Oh, there's yeah, nothing I'll, better I'll than you. I sudden. I just want to see if they come back. <laughs> okay. I mean, so, like, I feel like I would only do it to one hand. There because... are a bunch of. Okay, that's fine. You could do. You could put one on. Sure. Uh, yeah. So I'm pretty there sure are. I put the second one on. <laughs> I lost. Well, technically, they don't actually work until you both you put them both on. No. Technically. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah so nothing I, happens I when you put the first one on, but when you put the second one on, <laughs> that's when the hands go away. <laughs> there are a bunch of like these little buttons and lights and stuff on the bracelets, and so you start like kind of with your nose, just start kind of <laughs> punching them a bit, and then you guys watch as like. Like like lightsaber glowy hands emerge oh. where his other hands used to be, and whoa! You know, it takes it takes a couple seconds to get it kind of calibrated, but after after like a, a about ten to about ten minutes or so, you kind of get full dexterity back, and you now have these kind of glowing bluish hands that seem to function just like your old hands. I want to put them on my feet. So you. Oh God! Uh, okay. <laughs> you, you do the same thing. You same thing. It completely disintegrates your feet. Except Does the he problem fall is that happens. Please say okay. he falls. Okay, and so, I don't want to screw Joe over here. When you take the bracelets off, however, okay. you don't. You no longer see your hand like that. The glowing <laughs> no, hands. We, go do away. we have multiple? I thought we had multiple you pairs have, of these. You have a. You have one. You have one Unpair. set of these. One set of these. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. I thought we had. So, like, like once you take okay. the braces off, and like, because you have this idea, like, you have just these these stumps. perfectly healthy stumps. Like they're not like they don't look paint and paint at all. <laughs> Everything looks fine. But then you realize you have to kind of put them back on, and which takes a little okay. doing. Oh, so that wasn't a magic trick. Uh, and then as you continue to mess with the buttons, you also notice that your hands when you start kind of messing around with different combinations of codes start shifting into these different types of tools and things as well so what you can basically do with these bracelets is you can kind of mess with them and you can change your hand like your hand shape into almost any sort of shape or tool that you want it to be okay are they always like laser hologrammy or yeah they're they kind like of like this glowy blue uh, but they they are tangible. So when you like you go and you touch things and they they're, they're tangible. They they physically do they pass through each other or do they? No, they don't pass through anything. Uh, they're they're just they're just glowing. Okay. Oh, yeah. those. That's kind of cool. See those man. being very I useful. Punch something as hard as I can. Just like find a rock or something. You punch something as hard as you can, and you're a very strong man. So you crack through it. You see, like the cracks in the in the the brown the brown uh, rock just sort of radiate outwards. You don't 
feel the pain like that you would normally feel in like your finger fingers or your your knuckles. You do feel it in your forearm though. Like you can feel mm. like the 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 reverberations kind of going up your arm and you know all the way up, but you don't like it's like you don't feel any pain from punching anything. Oh. These are great. <laughs> so yeah, I was wondering who's welcome, I guess. On. I don't remember <laughs> getting these, but <laughs> You don't remember a lot, man. I can keep these. Well, I, I kind of have to keep these now. <laughs> so I'm going. Yeah. One way to make sure you keep them. That's what I got. But she's like, wait, 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 wait. I think we're supposed to roll on these. <laughs> I was kind of hoping Khalil would put them on. So like the one bone finger just to sin. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, your hands are, you don't lose any stats or anything like that. But uh, all you really need to do is just Ooh. sort of. It's like think of a like a hand sized like a like a hand mm-hmm. tool of some kind, and you can basically reshape your hand into it. That nice. is awesome. Yeah, you're just gonna be my leather man now. I'm gonna be like, <laughs> I need uh, uh, this to work on something, and I'm gonna be like, yeah, What are these called? I'm just gonna so take like, your hands and use them. Just as put tools. bronze bracelets for now, or you can name them whatever you want. But that they just yeah. look like bronze bracelets. So if you want to come up with a fancy name, go ahead. Okay. All right, I'm taking them out of my inventory now. All right. I'm going to call them handy bracelets. Certainly very handy. Okay, so you guys are technically at a new destination. Uh, so, so it's been an extra seven days. So we're now at 37 out of 56 days. You have 19, you have 19 days. Uh, you're in the right area. It's just a matter of discovering where mm. this oasis is. Uh, and then it's doing whatever other things you want to do. So we have like your destination actions. So... What do you guys feel like doing for your destination actions is, is basically oh, where we're at now. Is a destination action also where you would heal if you have to spend a week to heal? Yes. Uh, I'm doing that. <laughs> okay. I've still got the one crazy eye that keeps wandering. Is this off. where we need to do the drop off? Uh, yeah. You know that there is a oasis somewhere around here that you need okay. to meet the guy. Cause this is just an empty and abandoned ruined old town that no longer Ooh. seems to be populated. And so you know that there is somewhere around here, there is proper civilization. It's just a matter of discovering it. So the mechanic in the game is that you have destinations Ooh. that you know they exist, but then there's all these like discoveries, like sub locations around a destination that you can potentially discover. So every new game, there could be different discoveries. So okay. um, one of you then, like one person can probably take then like, you know, that sort of explore action, which is to try to find like the discovery and then the rest of you can do other things. Yeah. We haven't done this I don't for have a while. to recover anything, so I'll uh I'll do the exploring. Okay. So, I think I've got I technically have an endurance to recover, so All right. So, let me share this with you guys again. So, the destination action I just shared again. So, those are the, the sort of the main things you can do. Uh resting is under the camp actions, which is the very last one. Um so, if I recall if you're just resting, if you're just doing the rest, I think you basically can either re, you can clear your fatigue track, you can restore a skill. Like if you have skill damage, you can restore that skill to max. Um, and there's like a third option. Basically one of those three options you can you So can if do. you have also stat damage, is that? Yeah, so like that's one of the things you can choose to do for your rest. For so a long for rest. For a long can... rest, yeah. So it's all of your life points all of one of your stats, your entire hurt or fatigue track, or remove one terrible condition. Okay, so this is or, so you can't get yeah. back life points and the stats. Yes, it's one of those things per per rest, mm. per long rest. Oh, I guess unless I, I do have you, one fatigue. Unless you find someone to care for you, and, you and if you're getting cared for during that week, then you can do two of the above. Exactly. And that would be like one of you would help somebody else out. That's what that means, basically. I can totally care for someone if someone needs help. I technically am at 11 of my 20 life and also missing an endurance and have fatigue. But you don't know that. <laughs> it's true. You're just in worse shape than you remember. Yeah. I'm, I'm down two points of uh, life. Oh, you can recover the full stat, right? Yeah. Yes, you can cover one full. That's one of the options. You can cover one full stat. Okay, uh, Joe, we said you were going to do the explore. Yeah. 
All right, go ahead and so if you're looking for discoveries, uh, I think it's basically if you have a like a skill, you can potentially roll like that might apply to exploring. You can go ahead. Otherwise, it's just basically a d20. Um, but if you think there's a specific skill that is helping you somehow, like look around or talk no, to people or whatever, I don't think so. Yeah, and then d20. Do I add? Probably well, none of the other ones that I have, so I'll just do a d20. 14. I'll throw a heroic on it, too. It's usually thought if, you, um, if you're if you doing discovery. And, so yeah, if you zero. have anything in thought, you can add to it. I'll uh, throw a d6 at that. Okay. Well, yeah, so let me know your total. 15. <laughs> okay. One. Uh, 15's not bad. Uh, okay. All right, so maybe it's maybe you, you kind of get to talking to some of these this this bone caravan, or maybe it's some graffiti that you see like on certain you know, uh, certain crumbled walls here and there. Uh, but you do, in fact, and and since you're specifically at, like looking around for an oasis, you do, in fact, uh, hear and get some basic directions to uh, what's called. Uh, was it called the cerulean five oasis is what it's called and it is three days away uh, you know that is a, a fairly remote but thriving uh settlement that's to the south of uh this area this sort of ruined area fallen number um from the way it's described it's kind of a mixture of some 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 merchants kind of move in and out of there, uh, but there's also, you know, other folk that kind of come come here and there, like aristocrats and things that are kind of living in a remote sense. Um, and there's something about a uh, a sky well that is sort of this hulking, massive structure, and that's what you're that, that you'll recognize it from a distance when you see it. This like weaving bits of these long dr uh, dryland coral uh, columns that are kind of twisting a bit like um like legs almost and that's how you'll you'll be able to see it at a distance so three days away okay okay all right yeah, so i know I'll, that back to everybody okay so i know that khalil uh did the healing i know that ensign did the explore um so teapot msg and tango what are the three of you doing i will be providing care for teapot by trying to put his furniture back okay. the way it once was before okay all right yeah Is that i was playing ingress so okay so yeah so get two so you can pick two of the list then the two two things from the list yep okay perfect and then msg what are you doing over the week i'm torn between life points you can heal or i could try and this is the time we could also spend to train up an ability right correct yes i kind of feel like despite getting life pet life points bet being nice i think he stretched himself to the limit that i would almost like to get the final third tier of the rubbery skeleton ability tree <laughs> okay um so so our little homebrewed rules for advancement um so if you're doing it's it this is an ability you said mm -hmm. it's All a right. beneficial mutation i had gotten from early on that i've been okay so you're going to, need to make a difficult stat test so a 15 uh using the most relevant stat you think there is to the ability so uh, whatever you think it might be agility uh, maybe I mean, i'm not sure i would think probably agility yeah and i do have one heroic so i'm going to roll that at advantage okay D twenty plus three. Boom! There it is. Okay. So uh, and there's no much... benefit. There's no benefit for getting a crit. So. Okay. So yeah, basically at the third tier of the whole rubbery skeleton thing is, I can change my body so quickly that anytime I use my weird rubbery form, I get advantage on physical confrontation, or oh, that's awesome. nice. parrying. It's that's like he awesome. could stretch his body up high and snipe from above or some nonsense. Jeez. That's really, it's, really cool. It's Mr. Fantastic Nonsense. 
Great. So, I definitely so have guys, uh, abilities I want to train up if we spend another week here. Uh, so we are at. So after that, after that extra week of spending resting, you are at forty-four out of fifty-six days, and it's going to be three days to get to the oasis. Mm. So do we want to like spend the one week here resting, travel three days, and then can you? Like, does this place that we travel to function as a place that we can also rest at? Yes, yes, you can. Yeah, I'll let you, I'll just let you, know, you guys know that right now. Okay. And there's also a, a a couple settlement actions. If you recall, like whenever we were at specific settlements, there were things you could do like corrals and stuff. There's going to be some settlement actions and stuff there too. Yeah. So you can, okay. you could probably, probably make sense. Don't we sense. technically need to spend a week trying to find the place when we get there though? Yeah, I was going to say, Joe, we don't Joe know did where it is. is so. No, Joe did that. Joe, Joe okay. spent his yeah, action nice. to find oh, okay. the Oasis. So you guys are set. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, I would. I mean, I would say just, just you know, I would say it's it's probably makes sense just to go there and then do another. You can rest there if you want. Like that's fine. Yeah. Um. But I will say this though. Uh. After, after Tango spends some time helping Teapot, and after Khalil kind of recuperates from some of the strange issues he's been suffering from. And MSG has been using the abandoned buildings to kind of test his stretchiness. Um, all of you wake one morning, uh, fairly late in the morning, because the sun doesn't come out until almost 1030 or so. Uh, it's just sort of this brown, ugly, ugly uh, sunrise. All of you um, wake up and you realize that everything around you looks just a, just sort of a little bit different. Uh, as you can see, hanging in the sky is this immense like pillar of brightness uh, that stands out amongst the kind of the brown, sort of the brown sunrise, right? And as that, that pillar starts to fade, all of you are kind of looking up. You look around. Most of your caravan troop is sleeping, resting still. Uh, you look over towards like the bone caravan merchant people and they're all kind of doing the same but you look up and you see the pillar dissipate and standing in its place is the gargantuan form once again of the true mother as she hey, has you guys you, uh, like you... seen this before or am i going but nuts that's here? her yeah that's her <laughs> pay attention what? you work just how her. i described i do Look how swole she is <laughs> yeah she, I know. she does it's a little so she does a little flex really quick just to let you guys know it's her just in case yeah. there's another true mother out there I mean, okay her form is truly amazing is this like a verbal agreement or do we have like a contract or something uh, it's, it's a spiritual a, agreement yeah uh well, i don't know any way to verify that your soul uh, does it's okay <laughs> just just trust us on this it's great you work for her. Ah. So Teapot, you see something hanging in the sky behind her as like the that pillar of light fades. There's something else floating in the sky right behind her. What is it? Oh my gosh. Um <laughs> my first All of you are getting a question. Just just my first thought of what is just a fart. A what? <laughs> just it's gaseous fart. Okay, yeah. just I'm just gonna put I'm just gonna put like a cloud of gas. I'm not gonna put foot, yeah. but I'm gonna put a cloud of gas. That's no totally fine. Cloud of gas makes perfect sense. I, I was just thinking tango again. Uh MSG <laughs> MSG. She's holding something clouds, in her hands. All, all clouds are farts. All clouds are farts. It's true. MSG, she's holding something in her hands. What is it? Um I think maybe some sort of like like a looking glass, like something to look through to show us the way. Okay. So a looking glass. So she kind of holds up. It looks like this. Uh, we'll, we'll describe it as some sort of like almost like an ancient telescope in some way. It's like glistening as well, despite the fact that there's no real sun out just yet. It's somehow the bits of the light from that pillar are still kind of reflecting off the the metal rim and the glass at the very far end of it as she seems to be looking off in a distance like like looking somewhere around here like this area and you've realized before a lot one of the last times you saw it you saw her she kind of pointed you in a direction of an 
an important location. Maybe that's what she's looking at. Um, Tango. There's like a crowd that of something. Something's forming uh, around her legs. Like something like like her ankles or shins. Something around there. I was going to say like a fog as a metaphor, but then the gas thing. This is something different. Something else is, is sort of growing around her legs. What is that? Uh, what were those things that she had in her hand that someone tried to smush? Oh, not just tried. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, they were they were the, little the lions, lions with the space helmets. Uh, yeah, I crushed them. Load of those. Okay, there is a herd her. of lions with space helmets. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and then, uh. Okay, uh, Khalil, uh, there's a sound uh, being emitted uh, from this this that that kind of foggy thing, that big herd of these different uh, lo- like these different space helmet wearing lions. There's some kind of sound coming from that massive herd. What does it sound like? It's tinkling crystal bells. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> nice. I like that. Okay. I'm gonna take a second to like wipe the side of like the glass on the canister that Melissa's in and like make sure it's pointed at it. Oh, that's nice. That's Thank very you. sweet. That's so sweet, Joe. I can see. <laughs> Ensign. Good luck. The true mother seems to be yeah. looking suddenly. She like her head just shifts and turns. She takes her head away from that looking glass and she's now staring directly at you, Ensign. The, this like immense power just bursting from her eyes like you, it, there's just no iris there's no pupil it's just glowing sclera just staring directly at you I think she's checking you out man <laughs> <laughs> you feel a, a memory flood into your mind now doesn't necessarily have to be one of yours it's just a memory something that happened in the past what is it that you're now reliving in your brain uh, not necessarily one of mine. Yeah, it's just a Is memory that... of any kind. Yeah. Um, I want to picture. It's like a playground with these same little uh, space lion things, but it's like in space. There's like no floor. Space lions. Okay. Yes. A space this playground. Is amazing. In space. Okay. <laughs> As all of you kind of look around, you notice that, again, everybody else seems to be sleeping. You look around, you see all of all of your your helpers, Ron Carr, you know, Davor, all the new people that you've you've brought into your, your caravan. They're sleeping. They don't seem to be paying attention to this. You look over at the at the the bone merchants, you see all of them seem to be kind of sleeping through this, except for one figure who has kind of stepped out from a way of from like kind of their there are circled Conestoga wagons of made, made of bone. You see this one figure that has emerged from it and is staring directly at this massive vision of the true mother. Melissa, what does this person look like? Uh, so this person generally looks a bit like a just a human, um, a bit kind of taller um, than one might expect. Um, kind of covered uh a bit oddly kind of in more like sort of furs and skins type of attire um which is sort of not necessarily the usual um and definitely adorned in you know kind of jewelry that is all sort of bones or teeth or other otherwise Okay. And the true mother says something that everyone hears, but I want I want our new uh our new player here, one of these great folk. What does the true mother say? Player formerly known as Lamp. So Don't overthink it. Could be something simple. Um Always drink your Ovaltine. 
<laughs> be excellent to each other yeah just what did she say my uh, bracelets are encoder rings <laughs> push to uh, the limit permission to buzz the tower yeah the way is forward okay the way is forward and so all of you as you're standing there staring up at this thing, you you hear the sound of tinkling bells. You see this massive herd of space lions. There's this memory that's washed like wafting through your mind, Ensign, of like these they're frolicking in space. She's looking directly at you. And all of you here, even though her mouth doesn't move, you just hear like the reverberation throughout the entire area that seems to shake the very ground. The voice of the true mother erupt in your ears and it just says the way is forward and that's where we're going to stop for this evening because we're right at time we'll learn more about melissa's new character next time but that's where we're going to stop and you guys have finally reached your destination for your your purple hazer job i got one like one line of dialogue out before we stop yeah absolutely all right, so this is really cool, guys. Like, is there a projector or something? And you even got one of the people in the other caravan to get in on this. Like, this is really impressive. But, I mean, really cool, guys. <laughs> Doubt. <laughs> you have to show me how you did it sometime. <laughs> just, just a kid, Joy. I love it. And that is where that is the last word we'll end this episode on right there. And that'll be it for tonight. Okay. Such a perfect response to like joining this particular group of characters. The constant mm. like, you're doing what? What was that? Why? Excuse me? <laughs> Everyone take a hundred XP. Yay. Uh, just for just for it being Valentine's Day. Yay. There you go. Wow uh okay uh why don't we do a last round table let's figure out what everyone's doing and then we'll take off for the night uh bert uh what is going on steam still murder oh we got a bunch of stuff going on uh tomorrow night tuesday night we've got first edition dungeons and dragons we've just started the pharaoh series of uh, the old tsr modules friday we've got bx dungeons and dragons thursday actually uh it's my 50th birthday i'm running a very old game of chill first edition and uh, <laughs> uh correspondence with that um very cool friday's bx dungeons and dragons saturday uh, our first game of weird frontiers on the official goodman games channel and then uh the sunday is uh boot hill second edition nice. so we got a lot going on this week nice uh, we got to, it was what, me, Chuck, Jake, and Jeremy last night, Bert, let us uh, play through Quiet Year to get some of the setting and the world down for that Weird Frontiers game. I'm looking forward. I get to be a spectator. It's it great. Fun. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Chuck, Defenders. Uh, yeah, Wednesday, we're continuing on with uh, Thunder Rift, the classic D, D basic setting but we're doing it with uh forbidden lands uh thursday i'm hanging out with bert for his birthday friday 10 p.m on defenders we're doing uh more shadow run uh things are going terrible there so it's going to be exciting to see how it plays out uh saturday during the day 1 p.m central over on grim and perilous plays we're starting up a uh, new D, D fifth ed game we're going to be playing through strixhaven a curriculum of chaos uh where we'll see a lot of the people here over there jeff dan and melissa uh and then yeah hanging out with bert on goodman games official saturday night for some uh weird frontiers nice nice uh jeremy what are we doing on thursday well sadly we're not cool enough to hang out with bert for his 50th but we'll no. try to make up for it by punching Nazis in the face. That's true. With some Akhtung Cthulhu over on uh, Carplay Games. I think yes. everyone can get behind that. Yeah. It's very fun. It's very fun. It's also very fun to uh, throw uh, cyclones at them. Uh, it's really, really fun. That's true. Uh, yeah. Uh, as for Melissa and I here on this channel, uh, Friday, uh, we finished up Delta Green Impossible Landscapes last week. Uh, we're still going to do like a wrap up show, but probably not till next week because we got some people missing this week. But we're playing Holler this week. 
Uh, we're going to do a one shot of Holler, which is a new Savage World Adventure Edition game that came out, Appalachia, 1920s, some fey and horror and stuff. So uh, come check that out. Our, see, Saturday we're doing One Ring 2nd Edition. So you can come watch me kill them with stuff, with Undead, uh, which is really fun. And Monday, next Monday, we'll be doing Deadlands, another Savage World game. So uh, that's what we got going. Yeah. Uh, I think that's about it then. So uh, for those of you who were hanging out watching tonight, we really appreciate it. Those of you who are watching on uh, the old YouTube channel, thank you for checking us out there. I think what I'll go ahead and do, I'll put us on the end screen. We'll raid some some poor schmuck who's still uh, who's still streaming uh, this late on Valentine's Day. Uh, so good night, everybody. Bye. <laughs> Later.